The story begins in a dark forest at night, where four women discover a dead deer and decide to look into it. One of them, Tebe, does something unusual. She takes out the deer's heart and is surprised to find it still beating. Seeing this, they realize that more than 12 deer have died this way. Following this, Tebe, looking at the waning moon, senses that something significant is about to happen and suggests they return to their ancient dwelling place. Next, the scene shifts to a castle where a pregnant woman is in labor and a midwife named Natalia is helping with the birth. Natalia's granddaughter, Ade, puts her hand on the woman's stomach and notices that the baby seems very sick and she's worried it might not survive. This terrifies the pregnant woman, and she accuses Ade and Natalia of being witches, demanding they leave. After this encounter, Ade and Natalia return to their home, covering their faces. At home, Ade's brother Valente is unwell. She shares her concerns with Natalia about the previous incident with the pregnant woman, and the latter tries to comfort her by explaining that some women possess ancient wisdom that men often fear. Meanwhile, in a school in Rome, a teacher teaches his students about the difference between science and religion. He challenges them to investigate the cause of death of a man said to have died due to an evil spirit's attack. One student, Pietro, examines the man's death and concludes it was due to syphilis, a disease. The teacher then emphasizes the importance of using scientific knowledge to combat witchcraft. Simultaneously, a group of witch hunters known as the Benendanti, led by a man named Sante, prepare to hunt Natalia. They believe she's a witch responsible for the baby's death. Sensing danger and knowing that the Benendanti are coming for her, Natalia makes Ade promise to take care of her brother Valente and stay together. Natalia also uses her magical powers to bury her spellbook and instructs Ade to find the lost cities if she doesn't return. Later, just as the Benendanti group arrives outside their home, Natalia willingly confronts them, allowing Ade and Valente to hide inside the house. In the next scene, after her grandmother is gone, Ade, desperate to find food for her ailing brother, leaves their house and goes searching in the village. Unfortunately, the villagers treat her rudely and refuse to help. She then heads to the nearby forest, where she meets Pietro by a river. He's on his way home to his sick mother and quickly takes a liking to Ade. Later, Pietro arrives in his own village and surprises his sister Cesaria before visiting his sick mother. He then gives his mother some medicine, but she claims that a witch made her even sicker. Next, Ade tries to sell her goods at the market to get some food, but the people there recognize her as the midwife's granddaughter and start throwing stones at her, believing she's cursed. Luckily, Pietro sees what's happening and intervenes to stop them. After this ordeal, Ade seeks refuge in a church, where she reads a notice stating that her grandmother Natalia has been found guilty of witchcraft and sentenced to death. The notice also mentions that Natalia will be burned alive the next day in front of all the villagers. In the following scene, Pietro also learns about the death sentence and confronts his father Sante about condemning someone to be burned as a witch. Sante believes that Natalia caused their unborn baby's death and put a curse on their home. However, Pietro insists that there must be a different explanation for these events, but Sante remains convinced that they need to fight evil. During the night, Pietro secretly investigates the baby's death with the help of his house helper, Spirto, and discovers that the baby died due to a problem with the umbilical cord, not because of witchcraft. On the other hand, in a flashback, Ade remembers her pregnant mother leaving, telling her to trust the next person who comes through the door with her new little brother. The next day, Ade rushes to the church and pleads for Natalia's release. Pietro also arrives with evidence that the baby died naturally. Unfortunately, the priest rejects their claims, insisting that Natalia is still a witch and the devil. Sadly, the crowd also supports the priest's decision and demands Natalia's death. As the crowd cheers for Natalia's death, the four women we saw at the beginning are watching and chanting a Latin spell. Natalia repeats the same words as she starts to burn, and as she looks up at the sky, a storm appears with heavy rain putting out the fire. However, Sante, determined to end things, takes out his sword and ends Natalia's life, stabbing it into her chest. After witnessing her grandmother's death, 
Ade leaves with her brother, and Pietro helps her to escape the scene. Before parting ways, he tells her to meet him in the woods near the fountain, where he'll be waiting. Meanwhile, Sante informs Giambattista about what happened to the supposed witch. However, Giambattista's wife tells him it was Ade, not Natalia, who is the witch. Soon, Ade and Valente manage to find the viper's nest engraved in a large rock, as Natalia informed them. With the help of the necklace her grandmother gave her, Ade opens a mysterious stone door. They then reach an abandoned mansion, where they are once again greeted by the four women, namely Tebe, Janara, Leptis, and Persepolis. In the next scene, Tebe and Janara arrive at a communal grave to collect Natalia's dead body. They bring her back to the ancient house and call Ade to look at her one last time. To Ade's surprise, Natalia transforms into her mother, Antalia, and here she learns that it was her mother who was taking care of her and Valente all this time. Meanwhile, Cesaria and Spirto visit Ade's house to search for a book that Sante's looking for. They find it under the floorboards, but can't remove it from the roots because of a spell cast by Antalia for its security. They also find some of Valente's peculiar drawings, which are resistant to burning. After finding nothing significant, the duo returns home with Valente's peculiar drawings and informs Sante that they can't burn them. However, Pietro arrives and proves them wrong by successfully burning the drawings, much to their surprise. Pietro is still determined to show that witchcraft doesn't exist, but no one is ready to believe in him. Back in the ancient dwelling, Tebe talks to Ade about their harmonious past, when they all live there along with others who had similar abilities. She explains that Antalya, Janara, and Tebe were the most talented, and were the only ones taught how to use the Book of the Kingdoms, which Antalya had hidden. There was a boy named Marzio who wanted to learn, but their teacher, Diotima, refused to teach him and sent him away. One night, Marzio sneaked into the room to read the book, but was caught by the witches. A confrontation occurred, and with Antalya's help, he escaped, but not before accidentally killing their teacher Diotima with his unique powers. Tebe mentions that after the tragic event, the dwelling was sealed, and Antalya was chosen to protect the book. Tebe also reveals that the book mentions the Chosen One, a role she believes Ade fits. The next day, Janara tries to retrieve the book from Antalya's house, but she can't enter because Sante and his men are also there, searching for the book. In the evening, Leptis and Tebe discuss recent events in bed and get intimate, revealing that they're lesbians and are in love with one another. Meanwhile, Ade and Persepolis have another argument when the latter takes Natalia's memory locket. Back in town, Sante talks to the priest, who reveals that his eminence, one of the king's close ones, is interested in the book. After Sante demands money and horses, we see the Benendanti setting off to search for Ade. The following morning, Persepolis appears frightened by a horse in front of her. Seeing this, Ade saves her and offers comfort. During their conversation, Ade learns more about Persepolis, her past, and her connection with Spirto. Ade also opens up to Persepolis and mentions her interest in Pietro. The two quickly bond over their shared love interests. Later, using Persepolis's telescope, Ade sees the fountain turn red, the signal Pietro promised to meet her. With Persepolis's assistance, she then leaves the house and tells her that she will return by night. Ade finds Pietro waiting for her by the fountain and immediately embraces him. They introduce themselves and share a kiss. However, the moment is interrupted when he warns her that she's being hunted. In response, Ade mentions that she's found a safe place but is cautious about trusting anyone. To ease the situation, Pietro tells her that he doesn't believe in witches, but it upsets her and she storms out, uncertain of her identity. Back at the ancient building, after not finding Ade around for a while, the witches inquire with Persepolis and discover that Ade has gone to the fountain. This prompts Janara and Leptis to go after her, as they are aware of Sante searching for her. Meanwhile, Ade reaches her old house to retrieve the book. She sneaks inside while hiding from Sante's men and uses a spell to free the book from the roots. However, as she leaves with the book, one of the Ben and Dante catches her. Fortunately, Janara and Leptis arrive just in time, and a fight breaks out. Leptis is about to defeat one of the Benendanti, but stops when she realizes it's a woman, Cesaria. During the altercation, Cesaria finds the book and escapes with it. 
Later that night, Cesaria returns to her house with the book, intending to give it to her father and the priest. Unbeknownst to her, Pietro secretly witnesses this exchange. After everyone leaves, he confronts his sister about her actions, but the latter insists that Ade is a witch and should be punished. Back at the ancient building, the witches gather around Antalya's body to say their goodbyes. Valente wakes up and approaches the group, asking about the woman. Ade then takes him aside and reveals that she's their mother, Antalya, who had been taking care of them while posing as Natalia. The next day, Ade goes to meet Pietro at their usual fountain meeting spot. They share a passionate kiss and promise never to keep secrets from each other. On her way back to the ancient place, Ade hears a woman yelling for help. She looks around but doesn't find anyone and decides to continue on her way. In the evening, Ade shares her dilemma with Persepolis, who mentions that Spirto is considering joining the Benendanti. Meanwhile, Tebe and Janara discuss their next steps now that Antalya has passed away. During the night, Ade again hears the voices of women calling for help. Tebe approaches her and asks about what happened, but Ade doesn't reveal anything and goes to her room to sleep. The next day, things get more complex for Ade when Pietro proposes marriage to her. He believes that if they marry, his family might stop persecuting her and she'll be safe. Ade is taken aback by the proposal and asks for a day to think it over. She tells him she'll give her answer at the same place the next day. Later, as Ade heads home, she keeps hearing the voices of the same women, asking for help and warning that the Benendanti are coming to kill her. Ade looks around, searching for the women, and has a vision of her mother cautioning her about trusting people too easily. Natalia advises Ade to avoid love and relationships and to focus on the voices she keeps hearing. In the evening, the voices become overwhelming for Ade, causing her to collapse on the floor. Seeing her miserable situation, Persepolis suggests she confess everything to Tebe, and Ade follows her advice. Janara and Tebe discover her special gift and realize that the voices are coming from other witches in danger. With the help of Ade's visions, they learn that the witch asking for help is blind and about to be killed. After this, without wasting time, they ride out on their horses to find and help her, asking Leptis to look after Valente. Frustrated at being left behind, Leptis decides to teach Valente how to use a bow and arrow using her non-magical skills. In the middle of the night, after relentless searching, the three women find the witch who is calling for help. They notice that she's being pursued by a group of Benendanti. Unfortunately, Ade and the others arrive too late, and they watch the woman jump off the top of a tower to escape the Benendanti. This sight causes Ade to scream in pain, and her loud scream alerts the masked Benendanti to the presence of the witches. They start chasing them, but Tebe and Janara use their powers to stop the pursuers in time, and they manage to escape back home. After the incident, Leptis tends to Ade's scratches, and Tebe urges her to focus on the voices she hears. Tebe believes it's crucial for Ade to inform them in time so they can save other witches in danger. Meanwhile, Sante takes the book to a church where a senior priest successfully manages to open it. As soon as it's opened, Tebe and Janara sense it, which leads them to uncover who managed to unlock the book's secrets. In the middle of the night, Ade decides to bid farewell to her brother and Persepolis. She informs her friend that she's chosen to marry Pietro, believing it's the best choice for everyone. After sharing a tearful hug with Persepolis, Ade returns to the fountain and spends the night sleeping in a cave. The following morning, Ade is joined by Pietro, and as they hug, she suddenly has a vision of Pietro's mother dying. She then reveals her vision to Pietro and urgently instructs him to go back home to see his mother one last time. With no other options left, Pietro departs as well. After he leaves, Ade gazes at her reflection in the fountain, which surprisingly transforms into Antalya. The episode ends with a question about her true identity.